has been trying to beat the glitter out of my brother for too long now my father bred his girls to fill the void of the sun that he always wanted. At some I speak, bred the lace with their ashes, so I exhaled them into existence. Where I'm from, brothers struggle on blocks, so bullets burn holes through hearts like the broken promises from our founding fathers. Father, forgive them. Thirty years. This marks thirty years for Rainbow Theater. Rainbow Rainbow Theater started off as a um, project where I had a multitude of students coming to me because they saw me working with the African American theater students on this campus and students alike in terms of our productions. And I can remember so vividly several folks from different cultures coming up to me saying, Mr. Williams, uh, we want to do that too. We want that. Can you help us? We want to tell our stories too. At the time, I know I was actually working here at Stevenson College as a preceptor, which was my second job. My first job was at the Theater Arts, where I was actually uh, a lab for a technician for them, um, working full time. Well, more than full time. I was putting in a lot of overtime because we were running about 26, 27 shows a season. And I told him, "Yeah, uh, give me, a, give me, give me a moment, and we'll work it out." To me, it was like a second calling. I couldn't shake it, so I came to the Stevenson Student Council uh, that was here at Stevenson College, and I really gave them the pitch of saying, "Help me." work this thing out called Rainbow Theater, where this is a multicultural showcase of talent that I'd like to be able to present. Can y'all, and will y'all help me do this? Um, I'm helping you with your theater here. This is just another step of including more folks on this campus so that we can see their stories. And I had a call from one of the chancellors, a vice chancellor who called me up and said, you know, are you being paid? Uh, I said, no, sir. Why are you doing this? I said, I wanted to make sure that students had a voice. I wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to learn how to embrace other cultures and learn to develop a greater respect and appreciation for those cultures. cultures. I wanted to make sure that some of these major writers that we have are at least being looked at because they have their own history lessons that we can draw upon and, and make a difference of, of understanding and appreciating the world around us. So the next thing I know in this place right here, Stevenson College, we did our audition for Rainbow Theater. We're talking about our third, fourth year now. And all I know, we had well over 125 people that came out to audition. And I 
came to me, I said, I can't no longer just do the three shows. Oh, no, wait, I had folks who, yeah. wrote, who wrote their own scripts. I had folks who did poetry. I had folks who danced. I had folks who played instruments. What are you doing? I mean, you name it, they were coming out. And they were different majors, from biochemistry to psychology to economics. It made no difference, but they all had a gift that they wanted to share. So the next thing I know, I said, we gotta do something different. And I had some strong leadership that I was working with because there's no way that I could do what I was doing by myself. But I had strong student leaders that jointly joined me and said, let's do this. We got your back, Mr. Williams. And I said, I got your back. Because I can't direct them all, so it's time for you to direct and I'll help you direct. I feel like in this case it's a little bit special just because I'm assistant directing but I'm also the CAD office manager. So I'm assistant directing but I'm the office manager but I also sit on the board of directors as the treasurer. So I have all this information and I work with all the same people. So Sometimes I'm at rehearsal and I'm buying flights for a show that we're bringing in. <laughs> Sometimes I'm at rehearsal and I'm taking cast notes um, to pass out to the cast just so that they can kind of take note of what they did that day and like what they can improve upon. Sometimes I'm talking to actors and seeing where they're at mentally. Sometimes I'm looking up pre-show music. Um, sometimes I'm bringing snacks. <laughs> Sometimes I'm giving people a ride home. Sometimes I'm just watching and listening. Um, and I think that's one of my like favorite parts about the job is kind of just being able to learn to know is that? Um, and just observe. Because I like to think I'm a good listener, but really you know, okay. only, only time will tell. Um, Forgive me for yeah. what? The first thing you need to know is that... How long is a pause? You said the lights are going to come on. The lights are gonna come on. But feel each other. Like, you guys are gonna do this so many times, you'll be able to know the pause. I don't have to tell you the pause. It's gonna be good. Okay. The know. first thing you need to know is that I wanted to leave, but I couldn't. Hey. <laughs> you did it! You did it! I didn't really know how to express myself. I didn't really know how to reach out to other people. But since joining Rainbow, I've become not only much less like demure and shy, but I've like opened myself up in so many different ways. Not only with like the way that I perform, the way that I act, the way that I just simply express to people, the way that I dress myself, but the way that I also like see the world in a sense. Because I've learned that like your confidence and your the way that you express yourself is just so incredibly important. It's very critical to like how you were able to move throughout this world no matter what. And Rainbow has really shown me like how to do that. And it's been a really amazing experience so far and I'm so happy I get to be a part of it. Now I've said a lot, but I want to say this, that many of those earlier pioneers who came in to help build and maintain Rainbow Theater and ATAT, because the two were really one, they had the same instructor, same right caretaker, right Mr. Don Williams, me. I only got a few majors up here. So there was a lot of unification, a lot of uh, working together, a lot of problem solving that we did. We did it as a family. Because these theater troops, even though they were tied in with academic credit now, they were also a family. They were also uh, theater troops that gave you a sense of belonging, a purpose of why you're here on this campus, greater than self-serving yourself, but us outreaching and uplifting others higher than ourselves. So it made a real difference of the transformation that when they first came to this door, as far as this university, it was all about me, 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 me. But through the practice of rehearsal, the coming out of the theater games that we did, the building of the community, things flipped within their hearts, within their soul, within their spirit, that this is greater than me. 
Oh, what a joy it is to be able to serve and uplift others, to make others look good on stage. And like Mr. Williams says this all the time, but I think that this is one of the things that he said that really did stick with me, like my first ATA audition, because I walked in and I was like, you know, I'm here at Santa Cruz with all these white people. <laughs> um, and he said something that really stuck with me and made me kind of like believe in the mission of this organization and like of CAD and of Rainbow and of ATAP. Um, and he said that the if you want to be blessed, like you have to uplift others higher than yourself. And sometimes when I'm like, I don't feel like doing this today, then I think about that and it like really gets me through my day. And I think that I've become more developed as a person. Um, because I really took in that message and I like live it and I believe in it. No, when it's too much to handle, when your heart feels too young for the pain of having one sister in jail for not following the culture at all and the other in a hospital for following it too closely. And you're just wondering how you even survived as an outside observer. I think of like ATAD um, and even Rainbow Theater as like Things that I learned in class in like sociology is definitely applied to like these places because I'm like, okay, well this is what I study, and these are the pe type of people that are affected by like systems of oppression that like we talk about in class, and it goes beyond like our lectures. So um, it's really cool to see that and to kind of like show other people what I'm kind of learning in class um, in like a really creative way. Last night, as you all know, police shot and killed gang members engaging in some sort of ritualistic hip-hop cypher to summon Al-Qaeda and communists. Police killed these terrorists to save innocent American lives. Right now, anarchists, communists, and radical Muslims are using this act of police justice as an opportunity to attack America. They are working together with the Occupy Wall Street movement to stage a so-called revolution. But um, I know that there are a lot of productions that happen every single year with Rainbow over the entire 30-year course that have gone over not only the multicultural aspect of theater, but also the queer aspect of theater. And I think it's so important and honestly really awesome that Rainbow is very queer to begin with. You know, like, gay, gay people are different. They all express themselves differently, you know? And Latinos are different. They all express themselves differently. I can reject him. I can reject his sexual liberation. <laughs> because if I reject his sexual liberation, then how can I justify it to my own liberation? So what is Rainbow Theater? What is it? It's an organism that's constantly building upon itself. It's an organism that's turning and transforming people around. What is Rainbow Theater? It's a place that gives you an understanding of who you are. It helps you define your purpose of life. And when I think back and I think about some of the pioneers, I have multiple people who are teaching now of theater. I have some of the sharpest folks who are writing for FX TV. I have folks who've been nominated for this and that because of their writing, because of their acting, because of their teaching skills. I have some incredible lighting designers that are out there working for, working for major universities. I have several students who are now full-fledged professors teaching the craft. And what's so powerful that most of them that came through Rainbow or ATAT was the only two organizations they come through. It's not like they were theater arts majors, but they found themselves 
because they had an opportunity to freelance and to explore. That's what Rainbow Theater is about. It gives you a chance to find out who you are. It gives you a grounding notion within you that people hear me and I can hear them now. Because we all are different, but yet we all have gifts that we bring to the table. So when you bring those gifts to the table, it's like a smorgasbord. You can pluck and pick anything you want to from that table and build yourself. Because of all the different cultures, and all the different insights, and the ways of thinking of, of, of rearing and, and, and raising yourself in life is right there before you. So, welcome to Rainbow Theater. We can never be more